would it be nice to go out with two wins in the final two home games of the regular season? And it just seems to me like just the little things. If you can do the little things better, that uh, your chances of winning both games this weekend are good. Yeah, I think our chances of winning the last four games are pretty good for us. Um, I think we figured out that we have to come out and play hard. Um, and when we do that, we give ourselves a really good chance. And then I think just uh, playing our game, I think when we can transition and break and get some easy shots, I think that we're a little bit better. And defensively, we've got to decide on what's best for us. Uh, sometimes running our red defense is maybe the best thing, but it's really hard to do that uh, for 40 minutes. And then to try to do it for 80 minutes is pretty much next to impossible. So um, strategy-wise, we've got to find out what's right and right combinations in for us defensively. And, um, just play our game. We're going to focus on Monmouth State this week and, and come out with two wins. When you look at Crookston, a team that beat you on the road earlier in the year, what do you have to be better at to get, uh, to get that win? Okay, anybody can ask. Katie, you want to you answer that question? Chris? No, I'm not <laughs> supposed to question again. Um, I don't know. I guess it's just we didn't come out and play hard in Crookston, and um, that place is something else, but I think just coming out and playing our own game and just hustling and being all over on defense and shooting the ball when you're open and just having fun with each other, I think we'll, we'll come out with a win. It's got, you know, X's and O's and that sort of thing, execution is great, but it's, you got to go out and have fun playing the game, don't you? Yeah, definitely. Especially if the ball is going in the hole, it's a lot funner. <laughs> A lot more fun. Two games here, and then you got two final regular season games, and then uh, the, the postseason. You really still fulfill and believe that this team can make a long run into the playoffs once we get through the regular season. I do. Um, like I said, everyone. Hopefully, Deandra's healed up for this weekend, but everyone's kind of Katie's hands healing. Everyone's healthy and. I think if we can come out and play with energy, we usually come out those first five minutes and play pretty well, and we let those teams find their runs, and we got to just answer back. But I don't believe we just have five games left. I think this team has the will and the desire to play a lot more than that. Sheila, the injury situation with DeAndre, what can you tell us? I, I know it's early in the week, but what can you tell us uh, about her status possibly for the weekend? Well, she's learned how to play on one leg with her hip being out. Um, Maybe she can fumble through another weekend of playing on one leg. I think she'll be okay. Um, she went through some light stuff yesterday, which is a good sign. Uh, if she doesn't practice all week and tries to play on the weekend, then that's a different story. But I think she'll go and give it a go and practice tomorrow, and I think that's a good sign for her being able to play and play at full, full strength for the weekend. Okay, well you got your three seniors sitting next to you. They'll play their last regular season home game on Saturday here. Uh, just a reflection. Uh, I, I, you get the two from Fairview. They want to be Montana, but North Dakota, and then, and then Chris. Uh, be careful just, what you ask, Scotty. Be careful what you <laughs> ask. Just an overall, uh, overall feeling from you as, as their coach for the last four or five years of what it's going to mean to you. I mean, it's going to be bittersweet on Saturday night because you're playing your last home game with these three seniors. Well, I think it's, it's always fun to have kids in the program that have been part of the program their entire career. And you get to watch how they came in and um, the struggles that they went through. But yet you see them grow uh, not only as basketball players, but also as people and develop and mature. And I think that that's kind of the best part about coaching is just watching people change and grow and become better people and um, mature and, and see where their goals and dreams are going to take them and just being a part of their lives and, and having the opportunity to coach them. They're great kids. and. Uh, they work hard and they love the game and, and play with a lot of passion. And um, I think they'll all have very nice, successful careers. And um, I know Katie wants to be a coach, and I think she'll be a good, good coach. And Morgan wants to be an elementary teacher. And Chris wants to tell people how to move in the gym and um, tell other people what to do instead of always listening to somebody else. So I think it's going to be um, – I think Saturday's going to be a fun night. We're going to make it a fun night. And uh, they all got the green light. They sometimes question whether they do or not, but they got it all weekend to shoot any time they want. And uh, I can guarantee that the ball will be flying around the gym. Or Hope just through the net. Hopefully in the right direction. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like I got guys. Um, well, I guess, uh, Katie, you eclipsed the 1,000 
career point mark here this weekend. Um, I guess, just I guess, what does that mean to you? And I guess you know, yeah, there's only 13 players in the history of Montana State women's basketball, and two of you are sitting at the table. So I mean, what does that mean to you personally and to be able to accomplish it with the teammate? Well, I think it's just kind of cool because Carly and Chris both did it, and we all came in the same year together. So for all three of us to choose something like that, it's pretty special. But uh, personally, I don't know. It's 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 a great accomplishment and everything. But uh, to be able to do it with this girl sitting next to me, it's pretty special. So. <laughs> well, realistically, it has to do with the fact that Morgan Close was her teammate, and they played all the way through high school. And Morgan's playing point guard this year, so she had the opportunity to get the ball more. Yeah, she gave me those dimes, and I just <laughs> finished for. Her. <laughs> Got you. Do you think it's important to have these? Last uh, couple games at home before tur uh, tournament time, like confidence or, or just being at the dome or walking to the you know, games. Or I guess that's an open question. I'd say absolutely. Just getting that one more home stand in front of your home fans and everything, and uh, there'll be a lot of family here. So it's just it's just nice for us and. To be able to like hopefully come out with two wins to going into like the next weekend and then into the Wednesday playoff game, so I think it is big and uh, the dome is a very nice place to play and somewhere that I'll miss to play in. Chris, you Chris Bell, you got any thoughts to add today? <laughs> How about your thoughts on uh, playing at the dome for your last home games? Thoughts. 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 Nah. <laughs> My thoughts. Um, yeah, it's going to be sad. I mean, playing here for five years, so it'll be different not playing here next year or after this weekend. So, yeah, we need a bit of a change. Morgan? The Dome is always a fun place to be on Friday and Saturday. I mean, even if you play a game that you don't think was your best, you have 15 people waiting to give you a hug and tell you you're still their favorite. and but you can bounce back and get it Saturday. But, I mean, the Dome kind of just made us all three feel at home right away when we got here. And it's a it's going to be a big night just playing our last time on the court. But the win will help ease the pain. 